All right, so we're going to be doing a VOD review of one of my games. So let's uh, let's get started. Um, not much really happens here. Welcome to uh, yeah, just chilling in the bush, making making sure that nobody comes and invades us right here. We already have a jungle order right here, checking the entrance. So uh, we have, well, I mean, he left, but uh, we have these two entrances guarded. I'm walking over here to make sure uh, nobody's coming through. And I'm going to be warding this bush right here to make sure I get some uh, vision of if the jungler comes to the scuttle. Uh, this pixel brush ward is actually pretty important, and I like to ward that around 120, just so I have enough time to walk back and uh, give the jungler a leash. So uh, this pixel brush, brush, pixel brush ward allows you to see if the jungler comes to get the scuttle, which is often like heavily contested, and then you can see if they're going to, you know, potentially get healing. So let's keep going, warding the bush right there, giving the jungler a leash. Uh, just giving the water pass and walking back into lane. Uh, so. Right there, I ping that the jungler is right there, since we can see a Kali already showed top lane, and uh, these two are just starting to walk into lane. So most likely the jungler jungler started blue buff. Uh, this allows you to use some potential like uh, jungle game pass. So let's get back into lane. Uh, I just need hands just to get my target on stack. I guess this is a really good, uh, really good stun right here because Morgana typically will beat uh, melee matchups like Terek because of her ranged ability to poke and harass, so getting the stun is actually extremely important of how the lane phase is going to go. In addition, I brought Aftershock by accident because I was playing Leona the game before, so it's kind of a bad thing, but you know, it helps out a bit right here where I get a stun off and proc Aftershock. So we're going to get a lot of damage on her. Burn Ignite, Burn her Flash, and Burn Kaelin heal, heal. So, you know, just make sure you keep this in mind when you're going in for the next play. So then we back off after that and just keep on for me. So I'm not sure if this ward right here actually uh, had vision of Jax, but you know, uh, it's always helpful. So right here, uh, I'm going in for a stun. I do believe that this is kind of looted and I get a lot of damage. That was unfortunate. My fault, I'm getting hit right there, but if I had a stun right there, we probably could have killed a... Uh... How do I like center this on my champion? Alright, probably could have killed a uh, this is extremely huge right there. So we're going to get the kill because they have no kill flash, and this basically dictates the entire lane phase. In a melee matchup, if you can get an early kill on a, like uh, two range matchups, it's pretty much uh, easy lane. You pretty much uh, should win the lane, assuming the jungler doesn't gank you too much, or as long as you can avoid the jungle ganks. So I'm gonna do a here and. Uh, So it's like so just farming a little bit, uh, speed it up. Um, Morgana's walking back to lane. We do want to get a back on uh, soon because we just got a first blood kill. And uh, I got an assist kill, so we do want to try to get a back eventually. But for now, we're just going to keep farming uh, and try not to get poked out. Not too far. Farm here, Morgana's trying to play aggressive. She has level 3 now, so she has Black Shield, so it's going to be really hard to land a stun. So this laning phase is just kind of a farming lane, because um, Tarek does outscale most support champions with his ultimate. He's extremely powerful, so that's fine. Scaling is uh, scaling is fine in this lane. We're going to back anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. Dude, this is annoying. I'm just going to do S, I think. Okay, alright. Yeah, uh, this is done right there. As I said before, we're going to be. Uh, uh, both lanes are going to be setting after this wave, I think. Uh, so it's fine. Uh, we, okay, so we do end up pushing the wave right here, I believe. So. This is a good wave, man wave management right here. Uh, since they just backed. 
we can, if we can push in the wave right here and get it to the tower, we will be denying them this entire wave while we get this entire wave of CS uh, and XP. So we'll have an advantage over them if we can get this wave pushed in. So typically you want to use Taric, uh, Taric Stun to get some of these things really low and then stun them here. So then, now as you can see right here, they're going to be missing a couple minions and gold and CS right there. So we should have a little advantage over them. Uh, they do end up uh, getting Dragon, I do believe I pushed the average mark right there. Unfortunately, we can't contest because jungler is topside, so it's not really worth, you know, trying to fight and most likely lose. So Mountain Drake's pretty good, but uh, Ocean Drakes are extremely good early game, so luckily it's not a Ocean Drake, so they could just, you know, spam spells with the mana region and stuff. Okay, so Vi's coming to gank. Um, there is a ward here that I should know that that's there because Morgana's auto attacking me there. So Vi uses her Q right here, which is uh, I don't know if that's the right play, but Morgana wastes her shield and then I grab my stun and I go in on Kaylin uh, with my E flash and then. She breaks the flash, and then Vi yeah, goes in, which is fine. Actually, no, that's not fine. Uh, that was kind of stupid. We should have just uh, we should have just allowed them to burn the two flashes, and then uh, yeah, allowed them to burn the two flashes, and then just left. I'm not sure why she went in right there. Uh, and but we did burn uh, a lot of their sums, so we burned uh, four four of their sums, kill TP, uh, both on the support and flash on Kayla. So it's not bad. Uh, Fortunate that Vi died, but we can uh, capitalize on this later, I believe. Uh, Vi, I mean, sorry, not Vi, um, Kale is uh, recalling right here, and then we can see that with that board. So she is getting uh, super delayed while top lane is pushing and hopefully getting plates. Uh, so, you know, we have a we have a global advantage because of that. Uh, this is unlucky. Um, it's really hard to command stuff with Mortana, so. You just gotta farm this lane out and hopefully get into team fighting phases. She takes a couple of turret shots right there. So yeah, we're just gonna be farming this lane. Uh, we have a decent amount of sustain because of that first blood, and we allow him to get a build water to kill us, which allows him to uh, life steal. So that's pretty good for us. Uh, like I need to emphasize this that early laning phase, especially against ranged supports. If you don't win early laning phase, uh, you can you can obviously still win the game. But if you win the early laning phase uh, as a tank versus ranged, it's super free. Hopefully, I mean if you play it correctly, yeah. So they we just we just saw them back, I think, or we know they back. So now we're gonna be pushing this wave again, denying them all the CS right here, and then you know, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna have like an advantage over them. As you can see, like I'm level six, he's level six, they're level six and level six to five, so ranged. Uh, Sorry, not range. Support differences. A bit bigger. So, Morgana's just going to be getting some wards right here. Lane phase is just going to go into the uh, So, we. I'm not sure. So, I placed a control ward there to allow it, uh, to allow Vi for any potential ganks. Um, I didn't. I don't think I was keeping track of the jungler at this time, so it would have been kind of risky with Jax there to counter gank, but uh, I don't remember how this play went, so we'll just see. So we know Morgana just hit 6, so that's I did miss my E right there, I should have probably saved it for later, but we, we know that they both don't have flashes, so we're just looking, looking to catalyze off that. Vi gets a really good QE, uh, uh, Q flash, sorry, so we managed to get one of uh, I do think I wasted ult right here. Uh, I wasn't exactly sure how, you know, how much damage I would output. That was my bad. I probably should have stayed ult, but we do get a kill right there, and then it's pretty good. By, uh, Jax doesn't end up getting the counter kick, so. With no Kaylin up, we're probably just going to be pushing this tower, trying to knock her as much CS as possible. Uh, so typically, as if, typically when they back or if they're ADC, 
is dead, you just want to push into the tower and deny them as much CS because the tower is going to be killing the minions in the XP as possible. So yeah. So because okay, so this is this is good. So because my ADC is backing, this allows me time to roam or get deep wards like wards over here. So I'm going to be roaming and getting deep wards because uh, my ADC takes a while to walk back to lane. <clears throat> Unfortunately, this is warded, so he does know this, and he does have to the right side. Uh, I, yeah, I am wasting a lot of time here thinking I can, uh... Actually, no, 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 this is not the one. Okay. So, yeah, so, this guy knows, or should know, I'm here because of this ward, but he continues going in anyways, which I think is a good play. So, he burns ignite, I help this guy, he wastes flash, and goes pretty much like this. Uh, Vicom is you know, gonna kill. Echo played this extremely badly, uh, considering he knew that, considering he knew where we were. So we want to end up getting him right here. Like Echo, I think. Yeah, yeah. So when you have the uh, when you have the ability to roam, whether you both just backed or your ADC is backing, and you think you can get a roam mid, you should try to go for it to help impact other lanes. So. I'm not sure if I'd back right here or not, but yeah, I'd be back right here just because I Oh, no, I don't. Actually. Never mind. Yeah, so we see Morgana coming up here. This is control warded, so uh, I know exactly when she has vision or not. Uh, but since this control ward is denying this vision right here... Oh, yeah, Varus plays this really well. He ends up killing Kaelin. So since we know this control ward is denying vision right here, we can... Uh, they don't know Vi is coming, so we have a really good opportunity to uh, help... Nice. Uh, yeah, Varus plays this really well and ends up killing uh, both of them. So now this gives us <clears throat> this gives us the ability to either hit tower or to get dragon. I think we're going to do a bit of both, so that's really good. We're giving objectives, uh, a lot of objectives bot side. So I think I just come to the tower and and on the launch, and then I think I back yeah, because I know I can solo solo this by myself with uh, so I get back off and see what items I have. So I have. I have Aspect and I have Moby Boots. So Moby Boots are meant to help roaming, whether it's roaming mid or roaming top or whatever. Typically you want to roam mid whenever you can. Um, top top lane roams are very rare, but they can really change the game. But I don't think I top, uh, roam top this, uh, this game, so... Uh, I have Aspect is just to get as many wards as possible on the map, because Vision is uh, really important. So, um, they're doing Herald right here. Uh, I, do, I do start popping up here. Because I think he's doing Herald. I wasn't sure exactly how uh, how much health Herald is at, but he does end up getting Herald as soon as I arrive, pretty much. So that's kind of unfortunate uh, that we lost that. But since we since we got a bunch of bot uh, lane objectives, it's uh, logical for him to come top lane to get whatever object objectives he can. And he does end up getting Rift Herald right here. I uh, can't really do much about that. So I think I start padding bot. Um, actually, no, I stay mid, actually. Um, Vi is coming bot, and, I, and she's going to end up getting a thing. End up getting uh, a couple of sums, not a kill though. So I'm just back here bot just to protect my ADC. I think we just saw Jax in the river, so we know where Jax is. She pops a plant to make sure that uh, none of them can abuse it. And it's pretty, yeah, if you can, uh, if you have the ability to pop this plant, uh, it's always good too. So you're so that the jungler is forced to use a uh, good long way around, or they're forced to use um, like a jump or a dash to get over the wall, and that means it's on cooldown rather than just getting a free jump using that plant. So we're just going to be with this lane, uh, pushing it into tower, trying to get as many tower breaks as we can. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, right here, let's go back. So, we know that both of them have burned sums. Unfortunately, um, Morgana does have her spell shield still, so we won't be able to really get much. Oh wait, no, she didn't burn some. I think it's kind of broken, but yeah, we burn her sums. I waste ulti again because I thought we had the potential to make dive, but I get rooted and uh, kind of just root our dive over, so probably should have uh, held that ulti a bit longer. Uh, mid lane is getting pushed in with Rift Herald that Jax just stole, and top is TPing. So we're just going to be pushing this lane still. We have priority, meaning that we will be the most likely be the first one to go mid if we needed to. Uh, and yeah, since we have priority and Varus is pretty. Uh, pretty strong right now while these two are, are like half health kind of and half on mana so I think I'm going to end up roaming here because uh, Varus can deal with this land on his own. 
Uh, I do try to help them over here, but they pretty much have this under control by themselves. So then I just end up wasting a lot of time here, which is unfortunate. I keep packing back and packing back because they keep starting these fights and then they keep ending these fights without my help at all, basically. So I do end up wasting a lot of time here. That could have been help spent like you know, dealing with this, but uh, I think it's fine. Uh, Mid out, and then I'll probably does end up killing Morgana somehow. I think she just walked through lane and does a lot of a lot of damage. So she just killed Morgana. We get Balling Tower. Top lane is getting pushed. Uh, I think Vibe probably should have been dealing with that, but I do walk up with Corky. Um, he has package, so pretty good gap closer. I don't really contribute much here, just getting an assist because I shield him. But yeah, we end up killing Kale uh, pretty easily, so she overextended there. And, uh, no knowledge of where anyone else was on the map, so she played that pretty badly. Um, we're getting we're getting some pressure and the jungle and push a bit. Uh, they definitely should have been this fight they're much higher level. Uh, probably reaches their first. So. That's good. This allows Corky to get top lane tower. Yeah. While we end up going mid and killing. So we're just going to be taking objectives across the map, and at this point the game is pretty much over. It's 17 to 2, so now we just have to close out the game with the game with this like what seven AK gold lead that we have. So we're just going to be pushing there, we're going to be getting more mid towers game basically. Yeah, so the game is pretty much over at this point. We're just going to be keeping the game. So a couple things I want to emphasize is that, okay, first, yeah, you should not take Aftershock. I mean, I actually haven't tried Aftershock on Terra. I don't think it's very good because your stun can be very inconsistent and hard to land, uh, especially when people know how to dodge. But um, what's really important is abusing this range matchup. Level 1, 2, 3, and 4 are extremely, like before you get ultis, it's extremely important to abuse a double range matchup. If you guys catch them out of position with your E, you should be, or like any stun, whether you're ranged, like most range, sorry, not range, melee. Most melee champions have like a stun or, or something built into their kit. If you can get that CC on the ranged target and poke them out early or chunk them out early, it means a lot for your lane. You need to, you need to win lane. Um, well, you don't need to, but it's extremely beneficial if you win lane as a melee matchup. Because then they can't really do much. So we're just going to be in the game here. We're basically just going to in here. So it's a pretty simple game. Uh, early game was mattered a lot here. Uh, we had a lot of, I would say, a lot of early game champions with Vi. Kali's pretty good early. Corky, Varus, also pretty decent early. Uh, so yeah, we just kind of abused the early lane matchup and just ended the game from there. Yeah, I do notice we did a dying and we got troll for a little bit, but I do believe we end the game in a couple of minutes. Alright, so that was the odd review of one of my Taric games. There's Taric versus uh, Caitlyn and Morgana. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.